each other. We have always an interactive Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The whole tariqah is supposed to be interactive. The relationship with the shaykh is that you have to feel that you are represented by legal counsel. So that you don't represent yourself because they say only a fool represents himself in a court of law. So this is a legal representation in the Divine Courts of, of Illumination and Justice. So this relationship is important to develop in which you help me at NurMuhammad.com and those that related to how to practice, how to do our practices, how to achieve these realities and what to study inshaAllah. And that way you build that relationship and it's important to come forward with what your heart is telling you, what you feel that you're being inspired by to calibrate that inspiration. Is that a satanic inspiration pushing you to something or it's from Rahman inshaAllah so that you can get that inspiration and continue. The path becomes more and more difficult with all the difficulty we have in our dunya that surrounds us, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah mm. uh, What to choose between letting siblings visit our house or we visit their house, is there any energy relating issues? Do we pick up the burdens from the houses we visit? You have to get the book, these are the book questions. A timeless reality and uh, okay, okay. Timeless reality, <laughs> inshaAllah. I think this is the last book that we put out. We're just going to do some editing for salawats but this is probably the last book that we put out and this is the book that is the beginning of books. So it means from anything that somebody wants to read, they want to come new to the tariqah, they're coming new to this system of Sufi meditation center is then you get timeless reality, you read it and then we can discuss further its understandings so that we understand that you didn't get the book and you didn't read it. That way this is a course and a curriculum. So basic energy question, anywhere you go there's energy. So if you're the more positive and who's the negative and that's how we can determine where I step. Everything is either higher voltage or lower voltage. Everywhere I step is it going to be towards a lower then I'm going to carry the burdens. If I'm stepping into a higher they're going to carry my burdens, right? <laughs> so you look for the zikr groups, they're going to carry your burdens. You look for a shaykh, they're going to carry your burdens. You hang out with a motorcycle gang, you're going to carry their burdens. Because you have to try <laughs> both analogies because <laughs> if it's middle ground they say, well who's carrying the burdens then? But let's go from the polar opposites. So anywhere you step you have to think who's carrying the burdens in the association. And that's why we said even if you don't step and you say, I'm not going to zikr anymore then okay let me come into your house now. And in your house who's carrying the burden since you're not coming here and you're not attending and you're not watching your zikr anymore? You say, oh I'm going to get back at you, I'm not watching anymore, hmm? You don't affect me at all. You cut yourself from Allah's ni'mat and rahmat so that shaitan isolate you, why? Because now in your home when you're no longer connected to a more positive charge, who carries the burden in your house by age going down? Because as they're older, everyone older has the negative charge. All the little ones have the positive charge. So in the home all the burdens of your work, you're going out to the mall, you're going to shopping centers, everywhere you're going on a daily basis will go towards the little ones because as they're smaller they're more pure, they just came from paradise. So that's the danger of one isolating themselves from the zikrs and the associations and then that understanding. Then if you are a person of zikr and you're a person of purification and, and continuous muraqabah and contemplation then don't take yourself where motorcycle gangs are, 
or in bad places because they're going to pull all your energy and you become bankrupt, you become bankrupt from the energy and that's the danger. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is the imtihan or testing become heavy on this holy month of Muharram or is it because of my bad character? Everything is flipped upside down on my side. Yeah, probably because of your bad character, no, alhamdulillah. How can you tell? What's the, and how can you judge? You know, when Allah loves you, you we keep teaching it's testing, it's testing. But you shouldn't think like that. We teach by virtue of telling people, it's a test, be patient. But when Allah loves you, how He's going to give you a higher grade? You know everybody secretly out there saying, I want to be a wali. If you ask them they say, no I don't want to be a wali. No come on, you really do want to be a wali. That's why you're coming, that's why you're dedicated. Well if Allah wants to grant you wilayat, He's not going to test you. So of course your life is going to be filled with testing. So much so that you don't even think it's testing anymore, it's just the way of life. So then it's no more testing, it's just the way of life that I love you. So of course I'm going to put through difficulty, see your character and I'm continuously raising your darajat, your maqam and your stations. So your inner reality wanted that, Allah is giving you that so don't focus on it anymore. Then you'll take the teaching and you have graduated in the teaching that actually I'm training now on sabr, I'm meditating, I'm contemplating. When I don't do any practices it's just straight out testing, slap here, slap there, chat, chew, chat, right? But when you meditate every test you cry, you connect your heart and Allah makes a beautific light to emanate, that your tears come pouring out. Because he crushed one side but his soul he brought into his Divine the Presence and he dressed it with every beatific grace. And then you're sh strong, you say, ah, take another one. Then he crush again and dress you with every beatific. But if you're not contemplating and didn't open spiritual, you're like, what is this life of slapping left, slapping right? So this is like a clinic by the questions that we're asking, the diagnosis is coming that yeah you have to do and be very strong on the tafakkur because as life becomes more challenging Allah is going to make it more beatific. Every difficulty you cry and connect your heart and all the sense amazing beatific grace and light and begin to have khashf and, and vision of holy souls that are with you that saying, come, come to us don't worry about these things, Allah will make everything to be smooth. And before you know the lives of shaykhs they're like in a car spinning completely off of a cliff but they're straight up, they're solid in their belief because Allah is making as a storm around them, they are in the eye of the storm with no problem because of Divine grace and Divine love that dressing. The world may see it as in something spinning. So this is the, this is the way of reaching these realities but if we just want to keep focusing, this is a problem, this is a problem as if you're complaining to Allah. So you don't want this station? No problem, I can't forget about you. And we were crying in Maghrib, this was a crying that, that when your heart is drawing near, begging and praying for Allah don't forget me, Ya Rabbi don't get tired of me, don't close the door. of your rahmah that I didn't achieve what I was supposed to achieve and then you become tired of me. And if you should be tired of me, where am I going to go? Who will take care of me if Allah is not jannah with me? So they don't pray that testing stops. But they pray that Allah don't get sick of them. Oh, I had enough of you, you're not getting anywhere. And maybe you didn't live, live, listen enough. So continuously asking, Harabi, don't, don't give up on me. Don't turn your Divine grace away from me. 
pray that Allah inspire and, and, and dress us to, to reach towards these realities and the immensity. Love and faith are both something that have to be nourished because they're the same. Those whom you love they have to know you love them. If you're not telling people you love them and you're not showing your love to those whom you love it will be lost, it will go. And Prophet described, love is like faith and faith is like a shirt and the shirt becomes worn, you lose your faith. Don't think, oh I accepted Islam or I'm a born Muslim, no your faith will go. It will become like a shirt worn and in the end one day you look say, I don't even have faith, the things I'm doing are not even a person of faith. And you know that Allah has turned from you, God forbid. But this love because earthly love and Divinely love is something that every day we work on, every moment in our muhasaba and our counting is begging Allah I love you Ya Rabbi please forgive me, I love you Ya Rabbi please send your tajalliya for me. So, ya Rabbi in your sujood where you're closest to Divinely Presence Ya Rabbi please send your madad to me, send your grace to me, send your blessings to me. Send the love of Sayyidina Muhammad don't give up on me. And that's a daily love affair with the Divinely Presence. How Allah then not going to love you if you're loving Allah But when you find yourself not loving Allah you're drawing away. Because they say, how do you know how close you are to Allah? I know because how much I love Allah If you don't have that love that's the sign of how far you are from that love. But that which you love, loves you. That which you focus on, focuses on you. So you got to give the love and you receive it. You nurture it and continuously develop it and build it. And then love is not something you just keep hidden but you provide the actions of that love. I love you and here's something beautiful. I love you and I did that. Now imagine this is for loved ones on the earth. You love your children, you give them a gift and they know my dad loves me, he shows me at every opportunity. Then Allah just say, if you love me how come you're not feeding anyone? How come you're not trying to do any, any good deeds from what I asked? Or how are you going to love Allah When you love His creation, when you serve His creation that you try your best to be of service, Ya Rabbi I'm trying to show my love, I'm trying to be of service, I'm trying to love whom you love. Your most beloved Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why all of these teachings of muhabbat and that we pray then this love is blossom and this faith becomes strong. Don't let it to just perish and go away inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Um, during this month of Muharram, what is the correct way of mourning? Get up in the morning. Like crying. Huh? Morning. Oh. <laughs> uh, you're watching it now. Right? I haven't stopped crying in the last two days, people were watching. So, what's wrong with this guy? He probably has a lot of problems. No. It's just the, the heart is picking up on a signal of immense repentance, immense sorrow, immense difficulties. From the most beloved of creation, the slaughtering of his immense holy family, there's nothing but sadness, nothing but remorse and repentance. One, repenting for a nation that does such a thing against their own people. We don't need any outside enemies in Islam. We're not fearful of Jews, we're not fearful of Christians, we're fearful of Muslims. Because Muslim to Muslim is the most dangerous. So this is the sadness that Prophet so love his nation, so love his family, it's like what they're doing to each other. What happened uh, 1400 years ago is happening still to today. Still to today they're slaughtering each other and harming each other. So then this Baba Tawbah has an immense energy, immense lights. 
these are the time in which to think about all these acts that have been done and the heart to become soft and cry. And when you cry you're asking for forgiveness for yourself, not for them they achieved immense stations. But Ya Rabbi how I'm going to ever do anything to, to reach your satisfaction? Save me, my children, my community, all our loved ones and that becomes the, the gate of, of immense blessings. And Mawlana Shaykh would say that in this times of Muharram make your eyes to cry. If you're not able to shed a tear something's wrong with the state of your heart. You're not, you're not thinking about anything, you don't think like your children are going to be slaughtered in front of you, you don't think that your family going to be violated in front of you, you don't see the, the sorrow and the difficulty of people who don't eat and don't drink and have difficulty and put yourself and, and, and your family and everything into every situation and say, how could I have survived a time like that and a test like that? Make everything to be real and, and passionate within your heart so the heart has a, a khushya because when the heart is hard like a rock there's no emotion. And when the heart has a softness like Allah crushed it so many times it's like a mirror. When sadness comes, sadness tajalli comes, joyful tajalli, joyful tajalli comes. And that's when Allah is describing that your Lord has a, has a, has a tajalli at every moment. So in 30 minutes you can go through 20 different tajallis on these talks because depending upon the energy that's coming then these tajallis are coming and reflecting out. But this is a time in which to soften the heart and to have the compassion within the heart and those whom have suffered remember their suffering. Those whom have and study the suffering of others remember their su suffering and then the heart begins to soften, the, the, the tears begin to flow and that heart is a soft heart khushya. And that heart has immense love and Divine grace that flowing within it for it's Allah's gift inside the heart. Because we said before love is a gift from Allah There's nobody that can put love into your heart, there's nobody who can force you to love something. That love is a gift from Allah that is the gift of faith. So when somebody is lacking love then they have to be crying even more to Allah, go get onions, put it right by your eyes, go into sujood and say, I don't know why my heart is dead Ya Rabbi, my heart is, is not, not, nothing is happening to me that put love and ishq into my heart and I want to cry, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Can we get a live demonstration on how to meditate and breathe please? Uh, yeah but not now, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's off subject yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, as Salaam Shaykh, what is the difference between meditation with eyes open and eyes closed? Walaykum As Salaam, that's the difference between meditation and no meditation. Meditation and tafakkur is to cut yourself off from everything. So. It's the exact eye that's giving you problems and giving us problems. The eyes are recording like a video camera. So as much as they're recording it's distracting your heart. So the eyes in spirituality directly connecting to the hard drive of the heart. So when we shut the eyes then you can deal with the hard drive of the heart. As soon as you shut the eyes you're focusing on the heart and then the meditation has to be from the level of the heart. When the focus with their eyes that then becomes through the level of the mind. So what their eyes are focusing on and keeping their eyes open as if they're trying to meditate within their head and there's nothing from these eyes to see and there's nowhere that these eyes are going to reach of these realities, not at that level. Once they've meditated and Allah opened their heart which is a much more advanced reality 
then it doesn't matter if they close their eye or open their eye, Allah will show them what they want to see because of the strength of their spiritual vision. They look into the seven heavens and beyond with their spiritual vision and that's when Prophet described that, watch out for the vision, the firasul of the believer for he looks with the light of Allah And through that light they can look into the heart and to the nafs of people. They know even what your intention inside your heart is. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Since Allah has written our destiny even before we were born, does it mean Allah has destined pain for a newborn baby born with terminal illness? These are philosophy questions. Mm. You've taken too many philosophy courses at school, college. College is very bad for you. <laughs> It's very detrimental. The seeking of knowledge, we said before, is that it can be very bad for you. And knowledge from the universities of unbelief are extremely toxic for people. And the concept of knowledge in these universities is to disprove God. And the professors and their ranks, their tenure, their whole status is on how much they can disprove the existence of God to the student. Whether it's in math, whether it's in science and in medicine, all of the major subjects are to disprove the presence of God. So. You study their system with their intention, you come out an unbeliever. But Islamic knowledge is to glorify God. So then you send your children saying, look you, you're gonna go study now into these universities of immense disbelief. You study with the intention that I want to find the, you say, SubhanAllah, I want to find the glorification of my Lord. That every knowledge that I'm seeking is to glorify the existence and the magnificent creation of Allah And that has completely different than barakah. So when you take math with that intention that Allah is the one whom wrote these realities, then Allah illuminates your heart in math and in subjects of knowledge and numbers that can't be understood on this earth and become above the level of angels. So everything is based on intention and that's why when they study with shaykhs and they teach their children that if your children are about to go into these universities they have to go with a solid understanding that they're going to glorify the existence of Allah and Allah expand their hearts with immense realities and they become doctors and they have immense understandings of the, the reality of tip and nubuwa but if they're going to to disprove the existence of the Creator they come out as complete disbelief. So difference, difference in that reality and how to seek that reality and the immensity of, of that, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can our body be used to send us inspiration like ear ringing or neck pain or arm movement? If yes, how can we learn to understand them? Thank you Sayyidi. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> That's I think even a direct question from the book. So I think is, is maybe one of our clever guys is reading the book and actually <laughs> asking from the book <laughs> to see if I give the same answer that was written in the book. <laughs> that was like a test for me. Yes, <laughs> definitely everything that's a very sort of yes of course the body is filled with uh, signs. The greatest reality that Allah is giving is pain. Pain is a bell from heaven, it's a isharat from heaven. Imagine a life in which you had no pain on this earth, everybody would be 100% heedless and complete in disbelief. Pain Allah sends and that becomes the wisdom of pain is a bell from heaven. So when the one whom is sitting to meditate begins to understand that reality. Because as soon as you meditate, if you meditate in common, in, in comfort, 
you make tafakkur, you make contemplation in a comforting position you become heedless and sleep because you're tired and shaitan comes and says, wait just close your eyes and sleep too. And then you'll see them in the zikr also because they're deep in, in, a, in a bad tajalli. So as soon as you're meditating you've been taught then meditate on your knees. Sit on your knees and pain now comes and when you're sitting with pain your focus becomes very strong. You're not tired at all you just feel this pain and Allah begin to teach you to go deeper into your pain and that every difficulty sends you out of the burning house. So if this house is pleasant and everybody just sitting and becoming lazy Allah send a fire inside of it. What happens? Because of the fire everybody has to run. So He's teaching you, your soul you're making it to be too comfortable inside your body. And that's why we said your four enemies is your dunya which is your desire, your hawas, your hawa, your, your, your desires of what you want, your dunya of your desires, your, your hawas is your, your desire for comfort, for ease, I, I want to be comfortable. The dunya is your, your desire to conquer the earth, your nafs, your ego and shaitan these are your four enemies. So anyone who want to give too much pleasure to their physicality then what happens is their nafs will come in and begin to pull them down and there'll be no spirituality. So what Prophet described, he slept on a bamboo floor and when the Sahabi and people would see he had the marks of the bamboo was heartbreaking and he was teaching, I sleep like that so I can get up for fajr all the time, that throughout the night praying. But if you enter into a state of extreme comfort then the whole night you're heedless. So anyone who can't pray fajr sleep on the floor in a very uncomfortable bamboo mat. You'll be up for fajr, then the whole night you'll be up because you're not comfortable sleeping. But when you meditate Allah then show every reality of pain and difficulty pulls out the reality of your soul into My Divinely Presence. So as soon as you have a sickness and a pain before you were heedless thinking, I don't need to pray, maybe I don't need to do all of these extra worshipness, Allah send you a back pain, a foot pain, a leg pain and the whole night you're crying. Pain that is, is a pain and then the hikmah of pain is, it shows to you, pain is like a fire on your body that pulls out the reality of your soul because that night you spend the whole night crying to Allah Grant me relief Ya Rabbi so that I can sleep in peace again. And then Allah said, oh I gave you a little bit of difficulty and look alhamdulillah you're in My presence now. And then you understand this relationship, you said, you want me to give you some more difficulty so I can see you tomorrow? I said, no, no Ya Rabbi I'm really good, I'm really good with you, I'm here, right? But the heedless one keep needing a slap, you keep needing another slap until Allah said, you're not tired of being slapped? You can't do this just from love and that's when they become rijal, they're, they're, they're now rush, they're mature, Ya Rabbi please. So when my kids were small and they looked they're gonna get punished, they understood. When they got a little bit older they're like, we're not gonna, this is insulting dad, don't, 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 don't get angry. Then they started to do things out of maturity, Allah the same thing, you really need to be punished again? Say, no, Ya Rabbi I want to be mature. I'm coming, labaik, I heard your call, I'm coming Ya Rabbi, I make my salah, I make my prayers, I make my zikr and I don't need Allah to crush me. And that's the reality of pain that it calls the soul into the Divinely Presence inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah I feel like the fear of Allah and Jahannam is more important than the love of Allah and desire for paradise. I'm wondering if this is incorrect. The fear of Jahannam? No, well, our way is, is, is the way of love and muhabbat and good character inshaAllah. Focus on the good, focus on the positive, focus on the good character. 
Because these people who focus on Jahannam and fire they're very narani and uh, their pulpit and their teaching is a teaching of fire and they focus too much on Jahannam as a result they become Jahannameen, the people of Jahannam because <laughs> every talk is fiery, oh, you're gonna burn and everything's <laughs> gonna come fire on you and the stones are gonna burn you. It's like he's already in a pit of fire talking like that. It's not the way of Prophet say guide people towards goodness and good character and that our way is a way of rahmah and mercy. So we focus on the love, the good character, good characteristics and then to not be heedless that, Ya Rabbi don't let me to be forgotten on this world, don't let me to enter into where you're, you're upset by me. It was never about Allah you know putting fire on us and giving jahannam. We're we're at a point in our life where we're teaching and saying, no don't let Allah to be disappointed in you. That enter the way of love and good character and good example so that Allah not to become disappointed from the servant. But never you know way past the, the stations of Allah throwing fire onto the servants. These are ashaqeen of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. We're ready to go into zikr inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.